Alrighty, everyone. Richard Carlton here. Hi, everyone. Richard Carlton here, creator of FMTraining.tv, where we do great, awesome FileMaker training that's on demand from our website. You can purchase that at FMTraining.tv. Uh, we were having kind of an impromptu broadcast today. Um, However, uh, so it's not on the schedule, but we did have a couple questions that came up. One question was from Corey, and it was an interesting question. I want to go ahead and address it because I think uh, the information might change at some point, but I went ahead and go through that. Also, open Q&A. So the question that came in today was a question about FileMaker and the FileMaker developer subscription. So what is the FileMaker developer subscription? And actually, it was kind of a funny question because Corey goes, yeah, I bought this thing, and I don't know what the hell to do with it, right? And it's an interesting question, right? So what what did he buy and why did he buy it and and I, it's one of those questions that most people would ask before you buy it but he asked the question after i buy it so so understand that filemaker has so so filemaker has uh has had and does have this need to get software inexpensively out into the hands of developers and so the filemaker developer subscription was a way to filemaker to create a copy of filemaker server mac or windows that's the fms I'm saying, in this case, FileMaker Server, I mean exactly that. I don't mean Cloud 1, Cloud 2, Cloud nothing. They mean the FileMaker Server software runs on Mac and Windows. You can install FileMaker Server on Windows that's on a virtual machine up in the cloud. So it doesn't, cloud is more of a physical thing. Um, it's a server in the sky. It's not really software, right? I mean, it's one of those kind of conversations where cloud means what cloud means changes based upon the context of conversation. If I say FileMaker server, that means one of five, four or five different things based upon the context of the conversation. Um, FileMaker server could be the software, it could be the hardware. People say, hey, the FileMaker server is slow. And that would mean that the hardware and software combination is slow or it's down or it's crashed or whatever. So in this conversation, when, I, when I'm gonna talk about things, I'm being extraordinarily specific. So. When we say FileMaker server here, we mean the server software installer for Mac or Windows. So Claris had, had the need to get this out in people's hands. They wanted developers to be able to use server without buying a five pack or 10 pack of software. Now, it's a funny conversation once again. I don't want to start getting on my high horse and having a fit because then I have to pay my video editors to clean up kind of a mess. Uh, so. The, uh, if, if I'll check for questions as we go over here, but the short version of it is that uh, Claris built this years ago, and it's kind of a junk drawer of stuff you can get. When they don't know what the, so what they did is they created um, the FDS. So you get a copy of FileMaker server that works on Mac or Windows. It's limited to three users. It's only for development. It's not for a company to use for production. Um, so if you have three employees, it's really not for that. Um, you're supposed to be a developer. You can pay 100 bucks a year, and you get this. It's an annual license. There's no perpetual. Don't even ask. People are like, oh, how do I buy it perpetually? There is no perpetual option. Claris is eventually going to go to an annual only, only option. They would love to do so, only the fact that there are some legacy people who whine about it. But, like, I'm a, I, I love perpetual. I prefer to be on perpetual. But as a developer, um, one day they just forcibly, forcibly moved me to an annual license. I wasn't given an option. They just did it, right? So because I didn't want to pick a fight with them, I let it go. But um, they want everyone to be on an annual license so it gives them better, frankly, control over people pirating the software and things like that. So um, I get all that. So FileMaker created this developer subscription. Uh, it's an annual license. It's for three clients. What are the three clients? As a developer, you would be doing Mac, Windows, or WebDirect. Mac, Windows. Pfft, I just screwed that up. Mac, FileMaker Go, WebDirect. Mac, well, actually, Mac and Windows are, <laughs> well, yeah, you should actually have both those on your desk. So really, there's four, four clients. There's Mac and Windows with Pro, then Go, and then WebDirect on whatever. And so technically that's four. I don't know if it would prevent you from doing four, but the idea is that you're testing at least three of these simultaneously. So, so, so that's basically the most valuable part of what the developer subscription is. Then uh, Claris, because they needed a way of having a junk drawer, right? Remember we talked about the dead bird database I have. It's a database where we, we pile up uh, junk that we don't know what to do with. Uh, it pops it open. And so like I just put this record in here today because I didn't know what to do with it. It's a screenshot of the features from FileMaker 18. 
Um, there's other places to get that, but I had this nice picture, so I thought I'd keep it. So Claris cre uh, had this need for like a junk distribution function. And so what they do is they, kept, they keep building these little add blocks of add-on code. Um, and so one is the FileMaker iOS app SDK. So that's part of this, right? So if I scroll down here, I'm on the website right here. Um, not that it matters. You can do a search for Claris FileMaker Developer Subscription. You'll get this link. It's $100 a year. It goes through all the features that you have here. Um, and so basically what it says here is that you'll have access to pre-release software. You also get ac access to a couple uh, additional capabilities, three little toolkits they have, which are pretty much, mm, full, for the most part, not documented or documented very little. One is iOS App SDK. That's for taking a FileMaker Go application, combining it with Xcode, and building your own app that goes to Apple's App Store. Um, that is a whole separate one-hour conversation, at least. It's a very uh, deep conversation. So anyway, so the iOS App SDK is one add-on. It's very technical. The FileMaker data migration tool. We have great training in our paid FileMaker video course on this. Most of all, you have access to the current subscription of the, my FileMaker training, which is this app you saw a second ago, all the way, I closed it. Here's the, here's the video player if you recognize this. In here is the training for all these things in here. So if you're wondering about the data migration tool, this is really a useful tool right here. It's a little bit technical, allows you to move the data from one FileMaker file to the other FileMaker file. So once again, it, it's like, to go through it in great detail, probably two hours of conversation anyway. Um, this one right here is a custom app upgrade tool. There's almost absolutely no reliable documentation on this. Um, this is where you can export FileMaker out as XML, then hack that XML, and, that, and you can create a patch file that patches another file, okay? Um, the, this this feature's been around since 17. It kicks butt. It's awesome. This feature's probably been around since 15. It's kind of a known commodity. Um, it doesn't really solve most companies' problems because when you're building an app for the App Store, you're not and you're built and you're investing in a startup. You're not going to build an app just for uh, iOS. You're going to build an app for uh, like I built a number of apps and I learned a lot from this process. But we built a a security training application. We'll get into the details of that, but basically we did, uh, we needed an Android version too. So we ended up not using FileMaker at all. It wasn't really a database, more of a utility that did, that did timing and taining and it would talk to you and listen to you and do stuff like that. It's pretty interesting. Um, we ended up using other uh, products like Live Code, et cetera, to build it because FileMaker doesn't want to support Android. They just can't, they're Apple, right? And they say, oh yeah, we support Android. That's not a true statement. Uh, they, they support web browsers, and if your web browser happens to work on an Android, then they support Android very backhandedly. But it's Apple, right? Claris is stuck trying to support all the products in the world, and Apple's our corporate parent, and Apple doesn't care about any of that other stuff. So it's kind of, uh, I understand their dilemma, and I get it. I totally get it. And then Liout said, it's something I don't understand. It's supposed to be a developer subject, so I can develop a solution for a client test it. But if I want to modify the file on the client server, I have to can't do so with my own license. OK. All right, so Liout, I understand your question. I'm sorry, I'm chewing on gum here. I shouldn't be doing that. I understand your question. I totally get it. So let's talk about what the developer subscription so the, the developer subscription is basically this part right here. You get the three copy, a, a FileMaker server, not cloud with three copies. OK. You get access to pre-release software just means that you're going to see stuff about three weeks before they ship it, maybe. And then um, you're going to get these three basically command. These are command line tools. There's no interface. You have to command line. And if you love C slash forward slash backslash like DOS and stuff from the old days, you'll love that. If you're a true programmer, that's not a problem for you. Most of us are not true programmers. I mean, I went to engineering and I learned Fortran and stuff back 30 years ago. The reality is with that is, you know, I would rather build graphical interfaces with drag and drop, dra drag and drop tools and stuff, much more fun. Yeah, so Ed Burkle says he did punch cards. Ed, I I'm, I'm 49 and I never did punch cards. For me, I was coding, I started coding in 84. And, uh, and so, yeah, you're older than I am. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, okay, uh, Rutterman asked a question. I'd like to see how the... Okay, so we're going to hang on that for a second. All right, we're going to go back to Leo uh, on the question on the developer subscription. So here's what the developer subscription doesn't cover, and it's kind of what Claris wants to address. 
and that is it doesn't cover a cloud installation. So Claris, <laughs> it's really funny. So Claris says, you could draw your own conclusions on this, right? I'm not going to get into this because if I get into it, I have to pay my video editor to cut it all out. You can speculate whatever you want to speculate. Claris wants everyone in an ideal world to use cloud. They want to be cloud. They want cloud. Use cloud. Get cloud. Use cloud. Get cloud. Get, use cloud. get, cloud. get, 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 get cloud. When I say cloud, I'm talking about cloud too. And so just understand and we're being very clear about that. And so go use it. Go get it. Go get it. Go use it. Go get it. Use it. Use it. Use it. Get it. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Then as a developer, they say, oh, here's your developer subscription. It doesn't come with that. So... You can draw whatever conclusions you want from that. I'm not going to draw them for you. And I'm not going to respond to any here because you guys will just set me off. It'd be like triggering me, like off I go. And I don't, you know. So anyway, um, you would say that that's not a consistent message. Either it's not a consistent message or it is a consistent message. You can decide that one as well. So Claris is looking at redoing the developer subscription. I think that's where that goes. So, um, so it's been... How many, how many years has it been since Cloud has been in market? Um, it's, they shipped Cloud 2 in September, and there's still no path. Uh, there's no Cloud, really Cloud, direct Cloud. There's no way of doing Cloud or testing Cloud or using Cloud or anything uh, with FDS unless you take the FileMaker server software for Windows and you go to like Amazon and you do an EC2 uh, virtual server and you install it there, okay? Um, which actually is probably the, the, my favorite server we have because it's pretty reliable, pretty stable, and it supports d uh, the web API, data API, stuff like that. Stuff that generally there are, are pretty substantial limitations of Cloud 2. Cloud 2 is good if you don't need plugins on the server and if you don't have any direct web integration like PHP kind of integration. There's, we went to them, we had a conversation, we had explained them what the problem was. They think they support it. Um, we're pretty sure that they don't, um, and so uh, if you, unless, if all your units Pro Go, if you're only using Pro Go or WebDirect, Cloud 2 is okay. If you have server-side plugins, that's a no-go. You'll have to go back to FileMaker Server on Windows, okay? So I, so I have to buy developer subscription to develop for testing on server PSOS, and I have to buy a license. Okay, so... Um, Okay, so this is another one of those you can draw your own conclusion. I'm just going to lay this out for you, okay? Um, so Liao brings up a number of good points. So one is that if you buy this developer subscription and you have this package, which is great. I think it's a great. I would actually love to take the developer subscription and bundle it with my training. It would be the ultimate bundle. It would be really great. It would, be, it would make my bundle infinitely better. I've asked them about this. They just go... Ah, uh, nah, nah, and they're like, like fingers in the air. Nah, 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 nah. I can't hear what you're saying, right? So, but um, I could sell the living crap out of, of, a, of a video training bundle and their stuff. It would be epic. So, um, anyway, um, so Liao brings up a good point. So this, if you're using this, and then you go to someone who's using Cloud Two, <laughs> not Cloud One, Cloud Two. Um, it will, they have to add you to the server, and by them adding you to the server, your customer has to pay for you to come and work on their stuff. So it's basically you have to buy the software twice. And so uh, Claris knew about this. They thought about it at great length, and the management team decided that, that this was the direction they wanted to go. So when you buy it for yourself and you're using it, and then you're going to go and work on a customer server, there you have to buy your copy of Pro. So if they have a five pack and they have five people using it, then they have to buy an extra license on there and stick it on the cloud server. So they have to pay an extra $25 to $39 a month for you to be able to do development on there. Is that an insurmountable amount? No. Is it... Is it um, from, you know, I just, you can draw your own conclusions as what you think about that. So, um, so if you want to do Cloud 2 and test on Cloud 2, you have to buy it for full price, one. I can't, I, 
I mean, give it, you buy it from me, and I can give you a little bit of a discount on it, but still, I mean, more discount than anyone else will give you on it. So you definitely buy it from me, get a whole support at RC Consulting, and just ask for the Ryan, the sales guy. And he knows that if you're on the live stream, he'll give you a great deal. But you still have to pay for it here. And then if you go to, like, if, say, if you have five customers you're working on, each one of them is going to have to pay for you to be able to work on that server. Or they, or if they have five, a five pack, they only have four people. Then you can use that last slot, right? Makes sense. But if they're using all the slots that they bought, then they're going to have to buy extra to allow you to be in there. So you can draw your own conclusion about that as well. Um, so if you want to test PSOS, you have to have server. Period. Um, you have to have Cloud One. FileMaker server or Cloud 2, that's for layout. So the answer is yes, to do PSOS testing. I mean, that's the whole point of it, right? How can you call, I mean, I hate to be stupid about this, but if the, the script is called perform script on server. If you're not using a server, then what the hell is going to happen? Nothing. It calls no, It calls air, right? Nothing there. So I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just saying, yeah. Um, so Brian Monroe, what is the best, least expensive path for a single user who wants to host FileMaker files in order to access multiple locations? Brian, if you're a developer, buy the developer subscription, okay? You're here. Hopefully, it's not too bad. Uh, I answered your question. I'm kind of, I want to make sure I'm answering all the questions here. Um, buy the developer subscription. Is this it right here? Yeah, buy, go buy this. Get this, right? If you want, it's a server. It allows you to access it from anywhere, assuming you put it up on a server that has a static address that's available on the Internet. So... You need this and at least what we would call a T3 dot medium instance on Amazon, which is going to be about 20 bucks a month just for the hardware. So that would be what I would use, what you should use. Unless you have an internet connection with static address in your office and then, um, and then a static address with the router set correctly to allow tra FileMaker traffic in and out. Cool. All right. Well, that's it, everyone. I appreciate it. I'm going to try running the closed music here. Hopefully everyone will hear that. Uh, you have a good day. Thank you. More importantly, great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance. And that's all you can ask for. Trying to rally down 10. 925 to go here in the fourth. Short motion by Amendola from the left. Brady takes the shot to snap. Stands in, throws it left for Amendola. Reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10. Rolling to the 9. Oh, slightly behind him. Again, he makes the grab.